Hello everybody and welcome back to Farming Simulator 25. This is going to be our very first map guide for FS25 and we are changing the format around a little bit from what we did in FS22 and earlier. But before we dive into that, this video is brought to you by Soul Farmer and Fam Farmer. Thank you for being farm barons. So I always like to take a little bit of time when a new game comes out to reevaluate what could we do different. And I wanted to do map guides in FS25 a bit different than we did with respect to map reviews or map tours in FS22. And that is, we're gonna be a little bit more detailed in certain sections of the videos and a little bit less detailed in other sections of the videos. But the most notably thing is, gone is the rating system. Just overall, people didn't seem to fully understand it, fully grasp it, and therefore, we're tossing it out the window and we're moving on with life. But at any rate, Riverbend Springs. This is a Giants base map. So, as far as the map author, this is going to be Giants Software. This is a standard size map, so therefore it is two kilometers squared. This map has six different possible player farms on it. And I can tell you that when I was testing it, I was able to completely remove things at most of those farms. So these farms are going to be completely usable. And it's really great to see that in a standard Giants map, we have multiple usable player options. This map has 14 productions built in. Those 14 productions are a greenhouse for ice saplings, a biogas plant, a bakery, canning factory, cement plant, a cooper, rain mill, oil mill, paper factory, rope maker, sawmill, spinnery, tailor shop, and carpentry. Now, there are a few other things on this map that can produce things, but I am not calling them productions, per se, because we don't get an actual output that we can actually transport somewhere. They simply produce something that is then auto-sold. This map also has two construction missions. We have the ability to renovate the Grain Elevator Museum, and we also have the ability to produce a giant ship over at the Playground Maker area. And we're going to talk about that and what it takes to make all of those things here in a later part of this video. This map also includes 25 collectibles, of which you're going to earn $10,000 each. As we can see here, this map also includes one buildable building at this farm. I believe this is the only buildable building on the map. But then again, I really haven't had a whole lot of time on this map quite yet. This is an interesting little shed, though, because we can build what is classified as a small farm shed. And we're going to need to deliver over several stages, 5,000 planks, 2,000 units of concrete, 2,000 units of wooden beams and 1,000 units of boards to this location. And then over a little bit of time, we'll get a small wooden shed that will be correct or will be built in this location. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. And as far as our starting farm goes, we start out by owning farmland ID 1. And it's going to be located right here. And we can buy that for $180,528 if, when we start the game, we don't select that we want to own the starting farm. So with Farm Sim 25, it's a little bit different now. When we load a map, we can select, do you want to own the farm at the start or not, regardless of your preset. So if you don't own Farmland ID 1 for whatever reason, you're going to be able to buy it for $180,528. In addition, we also have Farmland ID 2, 3, 4, and 5 owned at the start. Now, this map has, as I mentioned, six other farms. Those other farms are located at Farmland ID 89, which can be bought for $337,464. We also have a playable farm at Farmland ID 80 that can be bought for $370,416. We have a viable farm at Farmland ID 66 that can be bought for $370,368. We 
And that is where our pallet, our sorry, our greenhouse for rice saplings is located. We have a viable farm at Farmland ID 42, which is $179,616. And then the last viable farm is at Farmland ID 33, which can be bought for $367,272. Now, a little bit later on in the video, we will be going to each and every one of these particular farmlands and taking a cursory look as to what is available at each farmland and basically providing you with imagery so you can decide which farmland maybe do you want to start your gameplay on. Because you could choose, of course, to not own farmland ID1 at the start. You could choose to add money at the start so that maybe you're starting over here at farmland ID 66 instead, just as an example. As a Giants delivered map, of course, it's going to have all the available crops in FS25 available for it. So we do have all 25 of our crops listed here. We also have the FS25 default crop calendar available on this map, as one would expect. As far as starting animals, we do have a cow pasture on the main starting farm, of which we have three cows pre-placed in that pasture. There is a chicken coop also available over at farmland ID 89. Those are the only two animals that are pre-placed on the map, as far as I am aware. We do have contracts available on this map. And as far as productions go, we talked about we had the greenhouse for rice saplings. We don't own that at the start. So I'm not really sure why it doesn't show up here. But it's available on the map. And if you do buy, again, farmland ID 66, you will have access to that greenhouse but we do have access to a bakery and the bakery is going to make bread and cakes we also have access to a biogas plant which is going to take manure silage slurry and sugar be cut and produce electric methane and digestate as we are used to our candy factory which is a little bit of a carryover from the premium expansion but you can see it's been expanded quite a bit to include other inputs well it's going to make canned peas jarred green beans, kimchi, noodle soup flour, noodle soup with rice flour, preserved beetroot, preserved carrots, preserved parsnips, rice bag, long grain rice, rice bag, regular rice, rice bag, rice. These really actually look like rice cakes, but okay. Rice box, long grain rice, and spinach. We have our carpentry, which is gonna take planks and make furniture or long planks to make furniture, or just wood to manufacture furniture. Notice that we don't appear to have sawdust or wood chips as an output anymore. Our cement factory is gonna take stones and make cement brick, cement bag, or roof plate. Our cooper is gonna make barrels from long planks, regular planks, bathtubs from long planks, or regular planks, buckets from long planks, or buckets from regular planks, and it is then going to also produce wood chips. Our grain mill is going to produce barley, oat, sorghum, and wheat flour. It's also going to be able to take long grain rice and make rice flour from that, or regular rice and make rice flour from that as well. Our oil mill is going to take canola, olive oil, and sunflower oil to make various oils. Then we also can make rice oil from long grain rice or regular rice. Our paper factory is going to accept wood and it's going to produce either carton rolls or paper rolls. The rope maker is going to manufacture rope with cotton or wool. Our sawmill is going to accept wood or planks, logs, sorry. And it's going to make wooden planks, long planks, regular planks, prefab walls or wooden beams. Our spinnery is going to accept cotton or wool and make fabric. Our tailor is going to take that fabric and make clothing. And then the two entries that are on this list that I hadn't already mentioned. We have the toy tractor production. This really, in my opinion, isn't what I call a production because we can't take the toy tractor and go somewhere else with it. So this is simply like the boat builder or the piano shop where you provide inputs and you make a tractor 
And if you don't own this facility, you get money when you provide the inputs. If you do own the facility, you get money when you sell the tractor, but the tractor auto sells. And the same holds for the wagon builder. If you don't own it, you're gonna get money when you provide the inputs. If you do own it, you're gonna get money when you completely build a wagon. And as I mentioned, this map does have 25 collectibles. And we do have quite the extensive list in Farm Sim 25 of our crops and our production items and other outputs. And of course, there are multiple sell points for most of these. Now, something I do want to mention is that we have a warehouse on this map. And we'll take a look at the warehouse later on as well. But the warehouse will either buy our products. For example, if I took a barrel to the warehouse, it would purchase it from me, or I could buy from it a pallet of barrels. Very interesting. So it's going to be a purchase point where we can purchase completed products and maybe possibly use it further down the chain in productions, or we can sell products to the warehouse as well. As far as our starting vehicles, if we choose to own the starting farm, then we will also get our starting vehicles. If we choose not to own the starting farm, then the starting vehicles also do not come forward. Well, all of the starting vehicles, we have a modest list of starting items. They are all fairly well used, decent amount of operating hours on each, decent amount of age on each, and modest wear and tear, if you will, on those. And as such, they've got an okay value. All of these items are owned. None of them are leased. Now it's at this point in time, which I wish to go over the painting menu in the build mode. So our landscaping, our terraforming, our ability to modify the looks of our farms. Of course, given that this is a standard base game map, we're gonna have access to all of the standard placeable objects that are available in the game itself. But as far as ground textures go, we have a decent listing of ground textures. We have got animal mud, asphalt, concrete, dirt, forest ground. We have grass, gravel, rock, cobblestone, and flagstones. We have all of the standard FS25 trees and a quite a nice listing of trees available here. And then we also have a nice listing of shrubbery plants that we can also put down as far as build mode goes. Now I've gone ahead and taken a liberty of buying all of the farms that are available. We're going to start with the starting farm here, Farmland ID 1. As I've mentioned already, we can buy this farmland for $180,528 if for any reason we don't own it at the start. This particular farm also includes a cow pasture. We also have a farm silo, several outbuildings, and one of those constructible sheds, as we've already mentioned. As far as an aerial view, we have our cow pasture available over here. Behind that, we have our farm silo. We have several beehives here with the honey spawn point. We have the buildable shed. A nice storage barn. Another barn there for storage. Another shed. We do have a windmill, and this is going to provide us with water output. We have our farmhouse, which is going to provide us with a sleep trigger and a wardrobe trigger here along the side. This is also where Walter, one of our neighbors, is located. I air quote that because, well, that's what Giants is kind of calling them. Walter, in-game character. He's our grandfather, if you will. Now, this building can't be sold. And I believe it can't be sold because it's tied to Walter. So if this building goes away, I feel that Walter goes away, and we can't get rid of it. Something else we can't get rid of for whatever reason is this building right here. And I've yet to really understand what this is indicating. It looks like to me that this should be a chicken coop. But there's no place here to buy chickens. There's no trigger indicator or anything. So I'm not sure what this is indicating. If you know, let me know down in the comments below 
that would be great. But at this point in time, this building and the farmhouse, they're the only two things here on the starting farm that really can't be sold. We also have at the starting farm, this little farm selling station up by the street corner. And this is gonna be a place where we can sell products as well. The second farm we wanna profile is gonna be a farmland ID 89. And it's gonna be located down here. And again, we can buy this for $337,464 if we don't own it. And this farmland is gonna have a chicken coop associated with it. You can find it located right there, right by the River Bend Springs water tower. We do have a farmhouse. We have our chicken coop. We have another one of those windmills with water trigger, as well as a few barns. And then this is a deco silo. So if you want a real silo, you'll have to put your own down. Everything at this location can be sold. We're now taking a look at the third farm. It's here at Farmland ID 80, just south of the main town here on the other side of the river from our starting farm and just north of Farm 89. Now this is kind of set up as a horse area, if you will. We have a big round barn in here, which seems to be some sort of training or exercise area. There's a giant ball on the inside of that. We've got a very, very nice house here and what i'm using as a delineation as to what is a player farm well that would be farms that have a sleep trigger associated with them and all of these houses have sleep triggers associated with them if you purchase the land up behind the large farm we have a little bit of a riding area exercise area for horses and then a little small barn everything can be sold here as far as the house and the barns go. I didn't really try to sell that. It's kind of an interesting option. The next player farm is going to be located here at Farmland ID 66. And again, it can be bought for $370,368. At this particular farmland, we have the rice sapling warehouse. We have a structure that looks like it could be a chicken coop, but there's no actual triggers there associated with it. So it's really just a barn deco object. We have a hayloft. We have another nice barn. And we have our farmhouse and some outbuildings. Everything at this location can also be fully sold. Now, the second to the last farm is a little interesting. It's associated here with the farmer's market and this decorative sunflower maze. But the farmhouse does have a sleep trigger and it also does have a wardrobe trigger. So it satisfies our requirement as to what makes this a player farm. Now, some of these buildings are tied to the farmer's market sell point and they can't be sold but other areas can. So we can sell a farmhouse, we can sell this barn, and we can sell some deco objects around the barn. But this area here, which is the farmer's market, it is not sellable. And now the final player farm is at Farmland ID 33. It's here kind of centered to the map to the north, just northwest of the Sunflower location, as we have this farm here. And we have several outbuildings. We have our farmhouse up on the hill. And we have this usable shed over here. And quite a lot of area to further expand and build upon. This map includes multiple lime buying stations or just general buying stations where we can purchase product. Here at our main starting farm, well, we're gonna have a loading station for our honey 
as we are aware. We also have a fuel tank. Over by the concrete factory, we have a lime buy point. To the southeast of the map, we have a gas station. We also have another lime buy point over here by the river. In town, we have a purchase point for liquid manure and a purchase point for manure. Across the street from the animal dealer, we have a gas station. Further to the north, we have another lime buy station over by the Sunflower Maze. And we have a lime buying station over here, kind of north of our starting farm across the railroad tracks, right by field 13. And we have another gas station as well, just south of field 16. With respect to sell points or locations that will purchase our products, we have the wagon builder. And the wagon builder is going to be located to the northwest, basically just to the west of field 30. We have our wagon builder here. And the dump station for the wagon builder is going to be at the lower level. Just to the south of the wagon builder, we have another cell point in the Grain River silo system. That's going to be located right here. And the dump point for that is going to be right there. Our farmer's market cell point is back here near farmland ID 42. And we have that here. We have two dump stations technically for that. We have a station here to our left, which is going to be for products. And we have a station here to our right, which is going to be for loose grain. We have another cell point all on the river. Located here is the restaurant. We're going to find that just south of field 64, where the river kind of makes a bend after coming down past the sawmill right here. And the dump station for the restaurant is right here beside this brick building. Now, something that I was wanting to be able to talk to you about with all of these cell points was I wanted to be able to list well, what does the restaurant accept? But sadly, due to how Giants is continuing to show things here on the prices screen, it would have to take, I'd have to write down all the sell points. Then I have to run down through every commodity until I saw a restaurant listed and, and write in bread. And then keep going down and go, oh, buffalo milk bottled and mozzarella cheese and butter and cake and canned peas and canola oil right i wish i really wish there was an option to not only sort by commodity but to list the sell points and then have the sell points listed here and have what they accept listed here i would love if there was an option to change how this was presented because i think it would be much more useful at least for me to be able to present that information to you. Maybe as a player, you're like, I got I got canned peas, where can I take it? Right? But for me, I'm like, I've got a warehouse. What does it want? Right? So it's just a couple competing things. But at any rate, that's what I wished I was going to see in FS25 when I was dreaming up this idea of going around to each cell point individually, showing it to you, and then talking about what it takes. But what it takes isn't overly easy to compile accurately the way the information is currently presented. Further along the river and near the map's edge to the east, we have the grain barge terminal. And this is going to be a grain cell point. We have the trailer dump located right here. We do have one of those lime buying stations here as well. And just north of that, we have our museum that will be a constructible. We'll be talking about those later on in the video. And then across the street, what we have then 
our oil factory. And we're going to be talking about the oil factory when we get to productions. Big Moose Dairy is here in town. We're going to find that located right here, just south of Field 84. And that's going to be just south of where the river makes its bend as it makes its way around the town. Now, this is not a production. This is simply a cell point. And the dump station for the dairy was here around the back. Also in town, we have the Grain West Silo, which is just over here. This massive silo complex. And we have the dump station right there. We have a fill station, and we also have a dump station and a fill station for the train. Now here we have a sell point and a buy point in the warehouse. So the warehouse, as I mentioned, will buy and sell various products. So we have the warehouse here just south of the Grain West silo, just north of the Grain Mill production. To the right, we're going to be able to come over here, or sorry, the left, we're going to be able to come over here and buy various products. Planks, long planks, prefab walls, wooden beams, fabric, clothes, cement bags, barrels, buckets, bathtubs, furniture, carton rolls, paper rolls, wool, eggs, honey, flour, rice flour, bread, cake, butter, cheese, sugar, cereal, sunflower oil, canola oil, olive oil, rice oil, raisins, grape juice, chocolate, strawberries, lettuce, tomatoes, spring onion, Napa cabbage, chili peppers, garlic, enoki, those would be mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, potato chips, preserved food carrots, preserved food parsnips, preserved food beetroot, canned peas, cement brick, spinach bags, jarred green beans, rice bags, rice boxes, roof plate, rope, goat milk, milk bottled, goat milk bottled, buffalo milk bottled, buffalo mozzarella, goat cheese, rice rolls, kimchi, noodle soup, triple soup, carrot soup, parsnip soup, red beet soup, potato soup. That's a lot of products that we can buy here at our warehouse. And then we're going to be able to sell products here around the back. Over here at the animal dealer, we're going to be able to buy and sell multiple things as well. We have the ability to purchase our animals or sell animals here in front of the pigs. We have a buy point that will sell our or that we can sell our bales, forage, loose product to. Then around the back of the building, we're going to be able to purchase manure or we're going to be able to purchase slurry. Here at the starting farm, we do have a small farm kiosk. This is where we're going to be able to sell various produce and other products that we grow and produce. We have a grain barge terminal, and it is just south of the starting farm, right across the river, located right here. And it's going to be another grain cell point that is going to act like it is transporting or unloading into a barge for transport. And we have the dump station located right there. Then just south of that, we're going to find our final cell point, which is here at the toy maker. And just like the wagon maker that we started out with, this location is going to accept product and produce wooden toy tractors. 
You see one of them here on the side. But it's not actually a production in my opinion because you don't actually take that tractor and do anything with it. It's simply auto sold once it's built here. But this is a sell point. If we don't own this production, then we can sell directly here and it'll take money when we drop off the inputs. If we purchase it, we'll get money when we have a fully completed product. Now, with respect to productions, we have multiple productions, as we've already said, on this map. South of the starting farm, we have two very close together. We have the cement factory and we have the dredging boat. Now, the dredging boat is listed as a production, but it really isn't production per se. We have the boat here and we can see that, well, it is simply spawning a heap of stones. So if you wanted a source of stones, come down here to the dredging boat. Which is extremely convenient because the cement factory is located right here. And what does the cement factory take? Stones. So we have our input. And we have our pallet output. And we have our interactive icon right there inside the gate. So the cement factory is going to take stones and produce great various cement product as out of it. And right there we have an endless supply of stones. To the north of our starting farm and to the west slightly, we have our tailor. So we have our interactive icon there right at the front door. We have our dump point and our pallet point here along the sides. From the tailor, we're going to go up and over a few blocks, and we're going to find the bakery. The bakery is here just south of field 16, and just south of the gas station here across the street. So we have the gas station over there, we have the bakery, we have our interactive icon, we have our dump point and our pallet point right here. Our carpenter is in town. We can see where the warehouse is located with respect to the carpentry shop. It is here north of field 81. And right here we have our dump point, our wood cell trigger, our interactive point, and our pallet spawn point. Literally across the street, we have our flour mill, which is right here. We have our dump point. At the end of the building, we have our pallet spawn point and interactive icon. And that is going to be right here, literally right across the street from our carpentry. To the south of town and along the river, we have our sawmill, which is located right here. And that's going to be north of field 77. The sawmill, we have our log dump point here by the log pond. And then we're going to have to come up here to this flat building. And the flat building, we're going to find our interactive icon. We have our wood cell trigger in there. We have Noah, our NPC sawmill person. And then we have various spawn points for the various outputs that the sawmill offers. So we were up here at our sawmill. We've made our way almost directly south, now south of Field 77, for our rope factory. So we have our interactive icon, our pallet point for our ropes, and our dump point for our inputs, which is wool and cotton. It's going to be here along the back. Our cooperage, where we're going to make our barrels and other wooden things like the bathtubs, that is also down here south, field of south of field 76, and directly to the east of our rope maker. So we have our pallet spawn point, our interactive point, and then on the other side of the building here. We're going to find our dump point. Coming up along the river now, just to the east of field 72, we have our oil mill. And around the back of the oil mill, we have our dump point. We have our pallet point and our interactive icon there at the stairs. You see that is right across the street from the grain barge cell point. And then if we go a little further, we have our rain museum 
Ah, the old paper mill. I remember seeing pre-release images of this. We have our dump point and we have our wood cell trigger located right there. We have our paper mill with our interactive icon here at the door. And then our pallet spawn point is here along the side of this building. So quite a large complex for our paper production. In the extreme northeast of the map, we have our biogas plant. And at the biogas plant, we have two three-sided silage bunkers. We have two large digesters. We have our interactive icon there. We're going to have our dump point for our slurry input. And we have our digestate output over here. So again, that is to the extreme northeast of the map. And then if we just make our way to the west a little bit, right across the street from the sunflower maze, we're going to find our canning factory, which is going to be the last production that we have here on the map. So we have our pallet spawn point, and we have our dump station there for our canning factory. And our interactive icon is hidden here beside this side door. Now there are two constructible missions on Riverbend Springs. One of those is the Grain Elevator Museum, which we see located right here. And this is where we're going to find it on the map, just to the east of Farmland ID 67 or Meadow 67, basically south of Field 66. And this thing is going to require quite a lot of inputs. In fact, you're going to need to bring 36,000 liters of wooden beam. 72,000 liters of planks, 12,000 liters of roof plates, 48,000 liters of boards, 12,000 liters of prefab walls, 6,000 liters of cement, and 6,000 liters of cement bricks. The second and even larger construction project on this map is down here at the toy maker and it is listed as the playground maker ship and in order to build this out well you're going to need to bring 162,000 liters of wooden beams 84,000 liters of planks 126,000 liters of rope 90,000 liters of boards and 12,000 liters worth of fabric over multiple stages, of course. So you can't just deliver all this at once. So those are the two major construction missions that are available here on Riverbend Springs. Overall, I'd say I'm pretty impressed with Riverbend Springs. We've seen a whole lot of this map over the last few months as we've had pre-release material drop for Farming Simulator 25. And there for a while I thought, you know what? I think we've seen pretty much all there is to see. But even yet today, there are still new things to be seen, new things to be had and explored here on this map. So Giants has not spoiled Riverbend Springs for us by giving us a whole lot of information. Touches like this with the Sunflower Maze, it's just neat. And cool the way this is all set up. It'll be interesting to see how this looks into the winter and if the AI replants this in the spring or if it just is permanently dead at that point. I sure hope not. We've got quite the list of productions available on this map. Six different optional locations for the player to start out at, which also means that this is going to be an excellent multiplayer farm map going forward there's lots to offer here is there much that's missing i don't know it's probably going to take a bit more time of actually playing on the map to truly discover where there may be some shortcomings 
with respect to this map. But overall, I have to say this is definitely one of the higher quality maps the Giants has put out in recent times. Now, I'm going to be updating a website which I have set up. And going forward, all of the Farm Sim 25 map guides are going to have a corresponding web page on that website. So that website URL is going to be fsmapguides.com. And we've already got some information up there right now related to Farming Simulator 25 and the channel specifically. But we do not quite yet have this map up there or other maps. Look for the video to drop first and then the website to be updated shortly thereafter with images of all the cell points, all the farms, all the production points and such. And then also it's going to link back to this video. So I'd love to hear your all's thoughts down in the comments below on a few things. One, what do you think of the new format? I tried to streamline it a little bit. I don't know if it's going to end up being shorter or not because it's been recorded in a whole lot of different segments and I got to piece it all together. But I felt that there were things that I was covering in previous videos that people honestly really didn't care about. So I wanted to streamline it, get right to the nitty gritty, get to the information, because in reality, if you put out a 45 minute video and the average view time is five minutes and 38 seconds, it, it burns a little bit to think that you put that much time into it. And most people only watch five minutes worth. So that is the goal. We're gonna have timestamps below for all of the various different sections of the video. So you can jump around and pick and choose what you want to watch when you want to watch it. And until next time, happy farming.